Welcome to episode 4 of Hibs Talk Extra Time this week. Myself and Liam were joined by Callum to discuss Sean Maloney's first game as Hibs manager last night with a 1-0 win against Aberdeen. We also had a slightly different Premiership review this week for the Cup Final on Sunday. Liam also had his weekly McClendon moan and we also looked ahead to the game on Sunday against Dundee United. As always, if you can follow us on social media, we are Hibs Talk on Facebook, at HFC Talk on Twitter, and also remember to subscribe where you get your podcasts so you can get each new episode as it's uploaded. Thanks again for listening and enjoy the show. Here we go, episode four, Hibs Talk, extra time. We'll give it to Sean Maloney. <laughs> Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Yes, well, as man. you can hear, as you can hear, myself, Craig and Liam are back again this week and we've got our Hibs Talk, extra time debutant, one of the, the mainstays, the actual, I suppose you could give him the title of producer because he sets up the, <laughs> the stuff in the background. <laughs> Mr. Producer Callum Callum. And, then, and then does a runner. Uh, how you doing, mate? You all right? Good evening. I'm good, guys. Yeah, yous. Good, Aye, mate. Good. good to have you on. Glad to have you on the A show. Yep, as, very uh, much. Exactly. Thanks for giving up your time this close to Christmas, Cal. Yep. We all set it for a, It was a, it was a welcome, a welcome escape, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Not much an escape for me, further on. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Bye. Anyway, tonight we'll be discussing primarily. Uh, the game against Aberdeen last night. Obviously, Sean Maloney took charge on Monday after a disappointing cup final weekend. And it was kind of, we knew, I suppose we've known it was coming for a while. Um, Maloney's name sort of hit the, you know, became a favourite very quickly. So I know the, the guys on Monday kind of spoke about it, but because we've not really had a chance to to go through it. Callum, what was your initial reaction when you, when you seen it was confirmed that Maloney got the job? Um, I think by the time it was confirmed, I had I'm very easily won over when I start looking at things and and look, listening to other interviews and stuff. I uh, I was unsure when it was first rumoured, um, but then yeah, you start going looking at what he's done and 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 how he's been to the you know the school of excellence and that kind of stuff. And you, I think yeah, you've got to, you've got to try and be excited because the, the the teams try to do something different. So yeah, the way he talks yeah. as well. Can I just say that I think it was, I don't know if it was last week's pod or the week before, but I think I actually got the ball rolling with Pibbs contacting Sean Maloney because I actually brought his name up in the podcast before he was even the favourite. So, no, somebody on .NET did because I put it in the Well, I, I don't read that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben Kensel, if you're listening, you're welcome, mate. Um, get in touch if you want to send me a Christmas card with some cash in it. I think going back to serious matters for a second and going by what uh, Callum says, I think you have to be excited, especially with the backroom staff that's came in as well. Um, I yeah. know that Gary Caldwell might be a contentious name amongst the support because he obviously when he left and came back and he scored and he sort of almost ran the length of the East Terrace in a couple, couple of years. years. But if you give it out, you need to take it back. And he had yep. been serenaded for... The majority of that game about having um, relations with a member <laughs> of a different following, shall we say? Because we like to <laughs> we like to keep it non-political here on extra time, don't we, Liam? Yeah, I mean as much as we can. So, I mean, looking on this, the face of it, you know, Caldwell has been successful before. He took Wigan up in uh, the championship. I know he spells it uh, Chesterfield and Partick Thistle won the really great. But maybe he's one of these guys that's now realizes he's better suited to being a number two. I think um, it always I think it says a lot as well about Caldwell's character, about one him coming back and then two him coming from being a number one to then being a number two. I think it says a lot about him and that he's not too up his own arse to then like you know demand a better job. I mean he, he might have a, a clause in his contract which allows him to leave for a managerial role, but you know. He looked pretty happy, and I, I'm sure I seen a tweet from him uh, the other night saying, "Oh, it was 
buzzing to be back and thanks for supporting that. So, I mean, he seems happy. I'm happy that he's back. And what he must think of Maloney as well, though, to to, to make that move exactly. from number one to number two alongside a guy that's not got manager, managerial experience. Maybe he, you know, he obviously knows him um, and feels that he's got what it takes to, to be successful. So that speaks yeah. volumes as well, I think. Aye, it's it is interesting. Um, I mean, we'll we'll talk about his, the you know the first the first game last night. So the Aberdeen at Easter Road always a tough game against Aberdeen, even though you know they're not as you know the McInnes Aberdeen was a right shit fest and a lot side. less daunting now that yeah. Glass is our manager. I mean, the team comes out and you know there was a couple of changes. Josh Doig comes back in for Lewis Stevenson. I think probably fairly agree that was that was the right call. Uh, Chris yeah. Cadden was in for Jamie Murphy. And I think, was that it? Was that the only changes? Ah, it was. Um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, in terms uh, of the, the lineup, looking at the lineup, it was pretty much. Uh, no, Scott, hold on. Scott Allen. Oh, Scott, Scott Allen. Allen well. yeah. Yes, Scott Allen. As well. Scott Allen. I don't know dropped right out of the squad. Uh, Pat, the website says he had a dead leg. Dead leg, apparently, yeah. So, what was your. I think we're we're all pretty much in agreement that whenever we see Scott Allen's name on the team sheet, that you kind of, I know we've had our own sort of private chats re- regarding Scott and what is he still at the level if we want to be competing for third and fourth, but you still get that wee bit of a buzz when you see his name on the team sheet. A hundred percent. I mean, he's one of the players who you know throughout the years we've been really lucky to have quite a lot of players who get your arse off your seat and you know make you applaud and stand up and and clap and turn to your mates or whoever you're at football with and go, what a player, by the way. And then we've had countless moments. Of Scott Allen, you know, he's reverse shrew balls and his lovely diags and everything. I mean, he's he's always he's always got the, the technical ability. It's a shame now that we can only usually get about an hour out of him at the very most. Um, you know, that's probably down to uh, his health conditions and stuff. But, I mean, he's no less of a player Um like you said, obviously we've got our own opinions about whether um, he should be a, a star a star player in this team if we're pushing for you know third and um, European positions and stuff. But uh, again, you know, everyone gets positive when they see Scott Allen. We see exactly. Scott Allen on the team sheet, eh? Because it, it makes you think, well, we're going to be attacking then, you know, because you know what, any even the guys coming in, they should know of the degree what. Alan's limitations are, you know, he's not necessarily going to do a lot of tracking back or that kind of thing. But so if he is playing, you re, you must be setting up in a way that's going to going to put the game through him or that kind of thing. So, yeah, you see his name on the team sheet straight away, and you go, all right, okay, he's already doing something different than with, from what we've seen in previous weeks. So yeah, and I think yeah, that was that was a big thing as well. Uh, you know, you saw right off the bat. I mean. In our group chat, we we had no clue what formation that we were playing because there was that uh, it was such a different system that we had, and um, yeah, I mean the, the I don't I, I don't even know what formation we were playing even when I got to the game and watched it, I still couldn't really figure it out. No, but, fifteen twenty minutes in, we were still going. Is this a three four one two or? A... <laughs> I I think the you could see right for the off that there's that. Maloney's only been working with him for a couple of days. I mean, I I felt like Cadden, Cadden and Doig were were pushed really high. Yeah, yep. For you can tell that when you can tell wide that. as well. Aye. Yeah, aye, but not. I mean, just even for the you know, usually we, when teams have the ball against us, they do sort of you know in their own half in that they get the freedom to sort of knock it about a wee bit into their midfield, maybe back to their defence. But I didn't feel like they got. Certainly in the first 15, 20 minutes, they never really got that chance because Cadden and Doig were pushing up that high. Yep. That Doyle Hayes and Campbell sort of inside them were also pushing up. The defence were pushing up to the halfway line, which in then turn meant that Boyle, Allen and Nisbet especially. Nisbet, put, was, Nisbet was brilliant. Were was putting, pressure on the, putting pressure on their back four. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought we, we played really well. Even like, like you're saying, out of possession, we, we looked like a better press inside than we did under Jack Ross and for the couple of games under Gray. But, you know, in possession, we were 
you could see in the in the first portion of the first half, especially, you know, the, the way that Maloney is obviously going to try and implement his players to play with yeah. knocking it about nice and quickly, zipping it out. And you could tell that he's he's definitely going to lean heavily on the wing backs uh, with Cadden yeah. and yeah. Doig because every every opportunity that we got, it was always out there. And Cadden at every every given opportunity uh, had a bit of space on that right hand side. It was difficult to tell for me because I'm in the waist lower for Josh Doig if he had the same amount of space. No, he did. And there was a Certainly. there was a few times there was a few times where uh, Josh Doig never really seen much of the ball in the first half when there was an opportunity. Yeah. Maybe look for the maybe look for the switch. But I mean, you can tell that for the way that we're going to set up, like Maloney is very much going to rely on what he knows from Belgium. Like that, obviously the standard of players. That's exciting. But that, exciting. you know, the, the three centre halves, you know, when you look at, you know, usually with, with Belgium, they have like the two sort of brute centre halves away and then a ball playing centre half in yeah. between them. Yeah. yeah. And then they've got, you know, the full back slash, you know, you didn't really get a wide midfielder these days but that's you know the that's what they are Josh Doig and Cadden seem like they will be they will be tasked with going back and forward back and forward for the full yeah. 90 minutes and then even the the high energy in the midfield uh, somebody like Josh Campbell I thought it was a shame that, that Doyle Hayes went off because I thought that Doyle Hayes you know, was having a good game eh? I, I mean, thought I see, Josh I th- Campbell no, I, thought, I thought Doyle Hayes was struggling I yeah really, I did as well <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought Josh Campbell was struggling last night but then again that's his first game playing in a six is what uh, what Maloney said, playing in that in that holding position, and you could tell. I mean, I don't know if he was overly comfortable with it. There was a couple of passes that went astray, not his usual self. But like when he's, if Scott Allen was in the team, I think Campbell would have been in that ten. I think that'll um, suit him more though in the long term. I think yeah. that position will suit Campbell more because Campbell's really busy for me. But he doesn't always, he doesn't have a. The, the impact, you know, the passing ability of, that, of a Scott Allen or, or someone else that would play there, but he, he works really hard, he does a lot of pressing. Yeah. I think longer term, that sort of number six position will end up suiting him better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not he's not creative enough to play in the 10. No. For me, but I, I honestly thought Doyle Hayes was, was having a poor... I mean, we kind of said it at the same time in the group chat, Cam, yeah, Doyle yeah. Hayes looked like he, was, looked like he was struggling. Maybe the injury, obviously, going off plays a part in that. Um, and I felt like you know the if there's going to be one player that I think will be a casualty from Maloney coming in and this change of style will be Gogic because the game just totally passed him by. I don't think, I don't think we're going to up. need to use players like Gogic. No, he's. I mean, I he's think nowhere near for me. I know he offers, you know, in terms of you know pressing opposition um, and sort of giving trying to give the back for that extra bit of protection but I, he's just not good enough on the ball like so many times yeah. last night simple passes went astray like there was a period there was a pe- chance where um, I think Cadden had maybe played it into Boyle and then spun off the full back and ran in behind and Boyle just missed the pass but the ball came back into Gogic and Gogic played the pass anyway yeah, yeah. despite the it fact that Cadden yeah. was already on his way back so Listen, yeah, for- I, I, I mean I make no bones about how, I mean, I, I don't like Gogic as a player. Uh, I don't think he's he's great. I don't think he's good enough for Hibs. But I think for in terms of you don't, I don't think we'll need an enforcer kind of player. But it's useful to have in and around uh, the squad. You know, if we're up against it against Celtic Rangers or whatever, it's it's sometimes useful. But you know, I think what we thought we were getting in Gogic, we thought we were getting the new Marvin Bartley. But at least Marvin Bartley could play a little bit. I feel like Gogic when you when you're playing him, and I, I mean, I, I feel like you're you're a man down already. You know what I mean? But no, it, it wasn't great last night. He has had a few good games. Don't get me wrong, but last night he didn't cover his own any. Yeah, and I, again, as we've said before, though, that's the problem. He was he was being asked to play in a central midfield role, which he absolutely isn't. You know, he's he's much more yeah. of a sitting just in front of the. The back just two, break, just to back break two. up, just to break up that play, and that's and what he does. Then a wee short, yeah, then a wee short five yard pass, and that's it. Uh, I mean, shorter than that, Cal. Come on, two yards. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could you could certainly see for the, like I say, for the way that we started, that there's the more time that Sean Maloney gets for this team, and 
his backroom staff, they'll be able to sort of take a look at the players that they'll be able to, you know, mould. It certainly makes January a bit more interesting. You know, look, looking at the the first half, I didn't feel like there was there was that many chances. Well, I've actually I've got either way in, ter- in terms of got... uh, like any like clear cut. I know uh, Aberdeen yeah. had one for distance that Macy. I thought Macy got a touch on it. He would let it go past him. Nah, right past him. I. I've got here um, the only real chance that we had first half was when the ball got sent down the line to Doig again, showing that we're obviously going to lean on the fullbacks, and then he fed it into Boyle, whose shot got deflected, and Nisbet heads over. Oh, Nisbet head, alright. I feel <laughs> Nisbet. I mean, it was for, for six yards. I mean, it, the, the, you get told when you're a, a laddie, he'd the ball down, uh, and I think if he did that. It's obviously on target. Does he score? Maybe not because it's coming up and over. So it's probably difficult to get a lot more pace on the ball and power on the ball. But, you know, he did it down, you give yourself the best chance. It's like Not, he's not only that, he always does it just straight down the middle. Like there's no... Yeah. Like every time he's had one of these headers, and is that about four he's maybe had in the last well, had five a or six against weeks? Dundee as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you're like, just get a bit of direction on it. Either yeah, side of the goal, I goal. think my mind casts back to Ross County away when I think he had two, maybe two really good chances yeah, with his definitely head. Definitely had a few, a few chances for the head in yeah. recent games. And then I, in terms of Aberdeen chances, I think they had the one that just went past the post, and then Macy did make a good save from um, a header. No, that was in the second half. In oh, the that's, first that's half, Macy made half. a good save, but again, the shot was for distance, and I, I feel like we. With most of the um, with most of the the shots that Aberdeen had were from distance and they weren't really that challenging. But obviously, we'll move on to the second half. Uh, so, there's, I mean, there's a see with 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 us, right? You can see that within that first sort of 15, 20 minutes, and in periods of the first half, what Maloney wants us to do. I don't see what Aberdeen want for Glass or Glass wants for his Aberdeen side. Like I say, we. We've been so used to playing the McInnes Aberdeen, you know, trying to, you know, get a get a goal on the counter or go for a set piece, something like that, and just and then just literally close the game down regardless of when the goal comes. I think a lot yeah. of their um I think Certainly. a lot of their play in recent games was been through Scott Brown. Yeah, he was ill yeah. ill last night, apparently. I was like from my spot in the, the stand as well. I was trying to even see if I could see him on the bench, but he wasn't there, so he must have been Yeah. Um, I know Stephen Glass said after the game that he was ill, but I mean a lot of their play went through Lewis Ferguson as well, without really coming to much. Yeah, I mean he did he did all right, but you know again nothing to note. I had to say in the group chat this morning. I mean I didn't even know that Hedges was playing <laughs> last that. night, Neither and that. Hedges usually tears us a new one. And uh, yeah. I, I didn't even know that he was playing. And I tell you what, if I was an Aberdeen fan, I would be absolutely fuming. The other one that I found strange is Ojo is now what, like a right wing back or something. Yeah, yeah. but moved moved into this moved into the centre in the second yeah. half. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously we get the we get the breakthrough. Corner floated in for well, no floated in. Sorry, kind of drilled in for Martin Boyle and Porteous up like a Great salmon. Corner. Yeah, great, great corner. corner. Well. I think a great goal overall. Porteous gets up nice and early, meets it really well, and sticks it in the back of the net. And I thought it was just rewards for Porteous last yeah. night because yeah, I, I, I thought th- he was outstanding. I thought the back three all in. I thought maybe Hanlon had a couple of shaky moments. Yeah, in the in the first half, I but like see, there was one way he, half, he was there was solid. one way he went up for a header, and it kind of went up, and he went to header uh, it away, and it he somehow it went behind them, and I think behind them. I think yeah. Emmanuel Thomas latched on to it. Did and that, then he didn't, he didn't, he didn't really make that, much yeah. of the chance. But I like you said, I think he had a couple of shaky moments in the first half. But then again, you know, he was a lot more solid than he was worrying uh, throughout the entirety of the game. And I thought he was I thought he was quality on Sunday in the cup final. Yeah. And uh, again, I thought he was I thought he was really good last night. Um you know, yeah, the back I'm, three. Again, I'm no Hamlin's biggest fan. And it takes a lot for me to say <laughs> that I thought he's played well, but you know, he's he's he has really turned a corner for me. Aye, the whole for me, the whole back three I thought dealt, you know, the the back three going at the sort of 
you know, with Cader and Doyle coming back to offer their support as well. When you look at that Aberdeen sort of front four that they would have had last night, it is quite a physical front four. Yeah. yeah. With Jet, Ramirez, Hedges and Marley Watkins as well. And I didn't feel as if, you know, they got any change. They didn't really get much joy in that. Not no, at all. like I know Jet went off quite early as well. Don't know, somebody went off at half time for Aberdeen as well, I'm sure. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. But they, I, you know, for for a, a strike force that's quite, you know, Hedges is rumored to be it's got goals know, going in there. Yeah, going to like top end championship. You know, when his contract runs out, Ramirez was a big, big signing for them. Jet was, I thought it was a bit of a weird signing at the time, to be honest. But he's <laughs> like you didn't realize it until you see him in person. He is massive. He's hench. Like, the funny he, thing is, he's not a a target man. No. He's more a play off the front, and yeah. and he's better with his feet. He's one of these big guys that's better with his feet than 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 with his head. But there was, I'm sure there was a time Josh Doig went to try and tackle him, and he just bounced off him. Like <laughs> the boys, the boys, massive. Um, we're also, getting away. We're getting away from the goal, though. Let's talk about the goal. Right, the goal. Obviously, Portis. I think one thing that we've been kind of critical of is our attacking from set pieces. Now I know. That might seem a bit weird given Hamlin scored for a set piece on Sunday. We've now Boyle, scored the last two goals from corners, eh? Boyles. But in terms of, you know, they going and attacking the ball, you know, there's a, there's a difference between, you know, a, a floated corner coming in and you're getting up and you're, you know, sort of glancing at it. With a corner, the one that Boyle took, you need someone to be aggressive to want to go and, yeah. you know, the, the, the ball's not coming to them, they are going towards the ball. And I thought that Port just done that brilliantly. He left the keeper with no chance. Keeper glued to his spot and he got right up above Gallagher as well. And another thing that I've seen that I think Maloney and his staff will be delighted with is that Aberdeen had every single one of their players inside the box when the corner comes in and we still score. You know, I think if you're Stephen Glass, you're tearing your hair out. You know, and Port just, it wasn't a free header, but it was as probably as free as he could get being marked by Yeah, he got up really well. Really well. And also I like the fact that he didn't he didn't let the leave the referee with any decision to make. His Aye. hands were absolutely nowhere near the man. Yeah. I just it was, it was a great it was a great corner, a great header. And I think there was a couple of corners in the game where um I think it was from the opposite side and it got swung in right to the back post and then headed back across again. So it's obviously something that they've been working on. And training as our as our set pieces because, you know, I think recently we've we've looked lost from set pieces, uh, especially corners. Not really, obviously apart from the final, we've not really had an awful lot of a tactic. Nothing different happening. It's yep. just kind of a swing it in and hope someone gets a head on it and it goes in. But maybe we're going to now start to see something that's a little bit different and maybe taking some teams. Uh, you know, by surprise a little bit. But as you say, Portis deserved that goal because I thought he was well. I know he got man of the match at the game, but he was my man of the match as well. I thought, he, I just was thought he was, yeah, he was tremendous. Well. To see the see the way he turned his men inside out, he covered ground. He, he was he won everything in the air. I just thought it was the best performance I've seen from him in quite a long time. I think he just was really, yeah. really good. We Aye, seem to was... find ourselves saying this more often than not. Portis has had an absolute. Brilliant game, you know what I mean. And that he's my captain, and I think you've said the yeah, same way. Really, well, like, he's, he's my choice for captain, without a doubt. Definitely, I definitely. There was, there's still, he still leaves you with the heart in the mouth moments. Like there was a couple of times he done a couple of step overs on the edge of the box, and you're thinking, what are you doing? And then you remember <laughs> that he was also a teammate of Effie Ambrose. Yeah, he's at Effie, I, I, I'm sure he said, I'm sure he said on multiple times that he, he wanted to be Effie Ambrose. Uh, you, 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 can, you can kind of see a little bit in his game that, you know, know that uh, he's a, a bomb scare or anything, but you can kind of see that he wants to play with his feet. He wants to move out with the ball. He's oh, not if, he, his... if he can step out of the fence like Effie used to, then brilliant. Well, you can see that he's trying to add yeah, that to his game. He's, he's not one of these players who gets the ball and, and just lumps it forward, you know, like Michael Nelson or something. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's refreshing to see that that's obviously what the modern centre half is going to be like. And it's good to see that we've got a, a really good one. Aye. You, the kind of the tail end of the game, no really much. 
I know Aberdeen had a chance for a header that that Macy saved, and then in the Great last save, in the last sort of couple of minutes, he came and took a cross under pressure. That was really he did that, he did that a couple Aye. of times through the but game as well. I think for Macy, it's still his his distribution. Oh, like no, it was it was poor last night. He's it? he's kicking even for dead ball scenario, you know, for goal kicks or free kicks in the box. Like, Not even I, just the actual distribution part of it, Craig. It's actually, as soon as you see that ball going back to him, you feel like he's got the fear. Aye. Yeah. Like, rather than, he, he doesn't see, the balls that get passed back for defence or midfield, he doesn't seem to be able to get any height into them. No. It's almost like he's he's hitting them with his instep. He's wrapping his foot round it. Yeah, it? Rather, than, rather than just trying to, that, that motion where you put your foot underneath it and it gets backspin. Aye. Like, it's like he's trying to place it. Yeah. I think for me is obviously, you know, the first one that goes back and he he tries to clear it and it, it's like a daisy cutter really in it. And then I think after that, everyone that goes back, he's then, you know, thinking, oh, I need to do better, I need to do better. And the Aberdeen players caught on, don't it? And Aberdeen players were on top of him every time the ball goes back to him. Mm-hmm. And that, that'll put him under even more pressure and that'll make him slice it even yeah, more. Aye, it does... his distribution isn't great at the best of times, but you know, it, it does seem be to be easy. affected by that. I can't remember who it was. One of you might remember, but we had a game against someone at Easter Road, I'm sure, earlier on this season. And every single time the ball went back, the, the, the away fans were having a go at him. That's were, most weeks, to be fair. Uh, but there was just one week in particular, and it just seemed to absolutely f- fall apart with it. Yeah. I can't, I can't mind the game, but I just really recall this one particular game where it, every time. He got put under pressure. They were the fans were going mad behind him, and he was he was crumbling with it. So you could tell. Like I noticed it a couple of times. Obviously, we've been down the far end of the east stand. I'm closer to the away end in the second half. Yeah. Well, I'm closer to the away end for the whole game, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when we're typically shooting towards the famous five in the second half, and you could tell it was annoying him as well. Like he was looking down at his boots. He was looking at the grass. He was. Like, get, like almost as if to try and give himself a shake, and it's it's a shame because, like I said, he's I think he started to grow on me recently. Um, you know the the two you could talk about the second goal against Celtic on Sunday. But he never really had a chance for me for the first one, no. but he see, he seems to be commanding his box a lot more. And yeah, I would agree with that. There does seem to be a change in terms of set pieces, defending wise, anyway, because I noticed he when came Aberdeen out for a few. Yeah, but also Aberdeen had a few corners where we had everybody back and we didn't have anybody marking the posts either, mm-hmm. which is strange. So I don't know if we are going more towards a zonal. I felt like that. I do not like zonal marking. I felt like we were trying to do a little bit of zonal at times throughout the game, but, um, you know, I, I couldn't really pick. Two. I, I, that would be something that we that we pick up the more we see Sean Maloney's hips. Yeah. What will be interesting as well, though, is you get if you look at how, again, I know we're not, never going to be, be the standard of Belgium or that kind of thing, but look at how the teams like that play, Man City, they use their goalie a lot to play the ball around, yeah. you know, one-twos with the, the, the full-backs and defenders to get out of tight spaces. Is Macy going to be the type of goalie that, that Maloney's going to like? Because is he going to give you that? Especially yeah. when you know when you look at Maloney going to the Cruyff Institute as well, you know it's yeah. it's very much for the you know Eddie Turnbull. You know if the if football was meant to be played in there, we'd put the step, we'd put the pitch up in there. You know it's meant to be played on the ground, and yeah. you know there's a I've I've tried to read up a wee bit on sort of this positional positional play that Maloney likes with the, with the overloads and that yeah yeah and like you're in sort of horizontal areas of the park you're, there's never more than three players in that yeah. area and if someone goes out someone else drops and it's almost like yeah. you know when you, I, when you read back to the Dutch in the 70s when it was like they could all play you know right yeah. card could play sweeper, that's why centre half that's centre mid up front because they literally just moved mm-hmm. about well that's so, it if you watch if you watch your, your, your Chelsea's and Man City's they're so fluid yeah, that you know they don't they start in a position, but they're soon out of those positions. Yeah, as you say, just that fluidity. Yeah, so it'll be interesting, definitely. Well, anyway, off to a good start, and it was nice to um, see, um, 
I suppose the crowd... The 14,000? Ah, uh, the 14,000 that was never 14,000. <laughs> also, it's... by the way, let's give Block 7 their due because they never stopped singing all night. Oh, I know. I know, I know, I know, they, know, I know, I know they never. But not <laughs> even... critical. You know, I we mean, were... critical of Block 7 on here, but listen, give them their due. They didn't stop singing all night. Which is um... why we've all got Last Christmas stuck in our heads. Still. Oh. Aye. What a tune! <laughs> I can't everyone else. I can't everyone else sings it. And I said on the pod a few weeks ago eh, about other teams stealing other teams' songs. But come on, Live to last the time. Christmas. And, and, and on that uh-huh. on that note, what song have they have they started to try? The uh, super uh, trooper. I heard that the super trooper one. What was yeah. the, what were they singing? Uh, uh, I can't remember the players. Porteous and Hanlon. Porteous Hanlon, David Gray, and someone. Hibs three, Rangers two, high beast through and through, putting on a show for you. That's actually yeah. pretty decent. To <laughs> Take, taking that moan back now then, Liam. So uh, I, was, I think I did say in that moan, I was like, aye, Hibs will adopt that. You did, you did, one. aye. It was I good. To, um, it was nice to see Maloney come right over to that section of the ground as yeah. well. And he did like a complete lap. Yeah. And off he is there. working really, really hard. On a charm offensive to have the fans on his side, like yeah. he's my the, manager. The, he's my favourite Hibs manager. The open, I, I said, the, the open letter, you know, yeah. just he's definitely because well, we, definitely Jack Ross had a disconnect with the fans. Yeah, well, even spoke, as someone that was a Jack Ross fan myself, he still, I, I would admit, that he had a disconnect with the fans. Yeah, you uh, can see in his, you know, in his interview though, you know, when he's he's Hibs TV one and he's. Sky Sports one, he was very big on, you know, we need to build a connection with the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, that that's the most he was like, that's the most important. We, you know, we get a connection with the fans and then we take it for there. And one thing, not to go off the Maloney tangent too much, but one thing I did notice that I think I put in the group chat as well, is that for almost the entirety of the game, Gary Caldwell's stance was mm-hmm. very reminiscent to Mowbray's. Because <laughs> Mowbray never sense. really used to sit on the bench. He used to, see, you know, those like the the wee like green fence that's like to the side yeah. of the dugout. <laughs> Mowbray, Mowbray used to just lean against that with his arms crossed. Yeah, and that's what Caldwell was doing last night. I did notice that. I did notice that. So it's right. it's interesting. I'm personally, I said it to Dave because uh, I sit next to Dave and Gavin that after the game. Me and Dave were very much on the Sean Maloney hype train. Nah, I've, I've got a really really in. good feeling that Maloney is going to do. Really good things with Hibs. I, I really do. And he's my favourite Hibs manager ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, you can tell me if I'm getting carried away here, boys. I don't think I am. He, he came round clapping and he's he's just such a cute little button. And he is. I love oh, him. He's just oh, so adorable. He's like, I so, know. He's so like a little teddy bear. Uh, oh, my Christmas has been made. I'm just oh, wanting, I'm just wanting them to fall out with Adam McGregor in the changing room and see how that would look. No, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> he was going round and he was fist pumping and everything. I was like, "That's my man." I, I love you, Sean. Um, I, I was, as we've spoken about quite a lot. I've been very disconnected with the club recently through one reason yeah. or another. And I, you know, I was very much if Hibs appoint Neil Lennon or Derek McInnes, I won't be back and yada yada yada. But I'm happy to say that yeah. I am on board this train. I am renewing. All season tickets. I will <laughs> buy it if I need one to. game. One will, game. That's all it takes. Maloney sixty nine printed on the back of the Bayern shirts. Yeah, if, if Maloney sixty nine. You know, hopefully, do you know what? As well though, it just you've got to maybe give respect to the the board, Kinzel, etc. That they have recognised that this is what Hibs need. The fans need someone like that that's going to make that connection and play that type of football. So I think, aye, fair play to them for for recognising that. Also, on the last point of Maloney before we move on, I think it's quite refreshing that we've actually now got a manager who is high, high standard. Like, I know that Lennon Lennon and whatnot played to to a big level, but Maloney done it in Scotland, captain Celtic, you know, won individual awards, went down to England, played in the Premier League, won the FA Cup with Wigan. Gary, yep. you know, him and Gary Caldwell, I've got almost 100 Scotland caps. Yep. Like, he's just been coaching Kevin De Bruyne and now he's working with Ray Wright. That's <laughs> exactly. I know who I'd rather be working with. Exactly. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't have a pioneership 
review this week because due to the change in circumstances with Omicron, etc., and Liam and his, his partner expecting a baby, yes. Liam took the decision to miss the game on Sunday uh, just to protect his... Very sensible, sir. ...his family, and obviously so he was na- you know, stuck at home over Christmas. So we did get a hot dog review. Now, I was under strict instructions from Liam to get a pie review. <laughs> As such, as I got to the game, I was shaking like a shitting dog. So I couldn't have eaten anything. So Emma and the boys got a hot dog. And Alfie gave me a review of the hot dog because I was like, I need a, should I get a pie? Just And I was like, no, I wouldn't be able to eat it. So for <laughs> Alfie, Alfie's review was, and this is practically word for word what he said, bun, dry and horrible, zero out of ten. Sausage, <laughs> Sausage, warm, 6 out of 10. Sauce, lots, 7 out of 10. So I was like, so <laughs> what, what mark are you giving it out of 10? And he was like, uh, I'll go 6.5. So, <laughs> Very much seems generous. Nah, it seems generous Very after the zero. The, the, bun. The, Hamden, the Hamden hot dog received a 6.5 for an 11-year-old who could barely describe what he was even eating and tasting at the time. So if we want to add a wee asterisk on at the Premiership table, <laughs> we can. To be fair, I think there'll be a lot worse than... Uh, well, there is well, already a worse than 6.5, so it's not going to be the worst. So How, how, was, actually, your, uh, how was your pizza twist, though, Liam? Aye, well, I was actually just going to, to say this. I had a pizza twist for the first time because you were talking about it the other week, Craig, that Alfie likes getting the pizza twist. So I was like, Ken, what? I'll I'll get one because I was I was hungry. Branch you, yeah. Branch I'd you. had a pie. I'd had a pie, you know, the week before, and I reviewed it. If you want to know what score I gave uh, the Easter Road pie, then please listen to episode three of Hips Talk <laughs> extra time. But <laughs> I got a pizza twist, and I was actually pleasantly surprised because I seen a picture of one on Twitter. You know that um, the page is like Footy Scran or something. Oh, it's aye. got it's got that. So I got one of them, and it was decent. But uh, I. It was. It wasn't overly good. You go back yeah. for it in a hurry. Maybe, maybe. That's it. That's, I'm, that's what I'm very. I'm very disappointed with the kiosks. Very disappointed. It seems like it's like every every other week. It's another shambles <laughs> with the whole the whole thing. But we'll no we'll no talk about that. We'll uh, we'll move on to the fourth instalment of. Well, should we start giving you the? I can maybe one. add in. I can maybe add in a little bit of a, a bit of theme music. I right, add in a harp or something because it's Ken Hibbs and all that. Mm, nah. maybe, bro. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so I've I've gone actually for, you know, it's it's Christmas time. It's the season of giving. It's the season of loving. So instead of a moan, um. Uh, this week going to talk about something that I absolutely love and that is the fact that every single team every single fan in Scotland absolutely hates Ryan Porteous and I love it, I for one love it <laughs> it's been quite a few years now since we've had a player that everybody hates you know, you look back and we had uh, Cummins, Riordan um, Stokes for, uh, Griffiths definitely Um but it's brilliant. It's so good to have a player that everyone hates. And it's like, he gets, he's always in the Rangers fans. He's rent free. Same way the Hearts fans, you know, every time Hibs lose a game or concede a goal, it's all, they're getting it all the odd. Do we look cappy, Patter? How much must they think about a young 21, 22 year old laddie to be, oh, that's Hibs got beat out. Oh. Does Ryan Poaches look cappy? Oh. <laughs> I don't know how they can type with their goblin hands, you know, on the on a phone. I don't know how it works, but uh, listen, I love it. Ryan Porches must love it. He must get such a kick out of seeing all this. Do we look happy, Patter, on Twitter? And he must love it. I don't know if you'll like the do we look happy stuff now because Hibs kind of look like like daft for bringing those t-shirts out. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't agree to be honest with you. You've oh, got him, you've got, up, Callum. but you've got a profit on what's there at the time. And no, I know, but it's in. It's obviously it's captain hindsight. It's Have you seen anyone to, wearing them? I've 
don't think anyone's actually bought one. <laughs> I don't think anyone's really bought one. Not I actually chance. think this will have cost Hibs money <laughs> to produce those tops. But no, I, I agree. I think you see it. I mean, I've got a group chat with a, a couple of my mates uh, who, are, who are Hearts fans. And over the last few weeks, every single time it's been purchased this, purchased that. You know, when he gave away a penalty, gave away the penalty against Rangers. Yeah, um, it'll run and run though because you know for a fact if, if he scores on the, der- the derby, for example, we'll yeah. all be giving it. Does he look happy and everything? So you know it's gonna. As <laughs> as well, you know, every every team has a sort of player that you don't like. Like yeah. you know, we all know what we feel about players like Scatchell yeah. and Morelos, but they're no. You know, Morelos isn't he, you know, he didn't grow up in the streets of Bogota running about with Michael Moles on his back. And, Maybe he did. But Porches, <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> I love your geography as well, there. <laughs> that was right, that was right off the tongue as well. Did you have to research that? No, it's, I just can I just know that's the capital of Colombia. <laughs> And, um, oh, that but Porches, is stuff. you know, Porches did used to run about the streets of Dalkeith with, with a hip strip on. So Gary Caldwell on the back. Aye, Gary Caldwell on the back. But is there <laughs> with Porches? It's it's so strange because, like you said, Liam, like, I thought last night we he was terrific. Like he yep. really, really was. And you know, it's it's easy enough to say if you take the goals away for Sunday about him and Hanlon as well, but. You know, as as does he still? He st- for me, he still needs to be careful. Um, I yeah. think so. Yeah, I mean, he's, he is. How old is he now? Twenty two. Twenty two. And yeah. I think he's he's still a little bit raw. Not, I don't know if raw is the right word. I think he's just. He I wouldn't say if he's, Hibs. if he's played over a hundred times for Hibs, I wouldn't call Aye. him raw anymore. I wouldn't. I don't no, think we can see him developing. You know, especially as we talked, his performance. On all aspects of his game yesterday was tremendous, but that yeah, I think one just, thing, yeah, is just like just like you don't why you don't know. Uh, I, don't know. I think what clouds him is he loves playing for Hibs and yeah. he plays a lot of the time as a brilliant centre half, and then he plays as a fan sometimes yeah. as well. I and I, I don't want to say it lets him down because I don't think he's really he's not really let us down at all. Um, you know, I don't even, I, I, whatever you think about the red card at Ibrox, I don't think it was a red card. Uh, I don't think he lets us down there. He's not really let us down that many times. I mean, over the years that I can remember, but there's some, there sometimes a switch in his head that goes for brilliant centre half to part of the CCS and just wants to you know, either go through someone or leave a bit on someone. And I thought the, the aerial duel last night with Christian Ramirez. Christian Ramirez was given as good as he got in terms of uh, holding on to him, uh, bringing yep. him down and stuff. But uh, it was just, it was the wee kick out. I didn't really see it properly until um, today when I, I had a look back at it. Uh, someone retweeted Christian Ramirez's tweet on it on my timeline. I'm sorry, like grass. grass. Um, but yeah, it's not the biggest kick out in the world, but uh, it's, a, it's probably a kick out. The problem you've got now is everyone. Is now making a reputation, yeah, making a reputation of them. Yeah, particularly as we just, as you were just saying, Rangers fans. And you know, the they were they seem to have been watching our game last night and were they picked on it, picked up on it straight away. Um, and yeah, so it's going to get anything that he does now is going to get pulled apart and and looked at, and and that's the problem he's going to have. Yeah, and it's a shame though because I mean. People are picking apart every every tiny mistake that he does and completely overlooking how good a footballer he is. I mean, you were yep. just talking there, Craig, about your pals going, poach us this, poach us that. You know, a couple of my best pals there, Jambos, and I, they, they give it this about poach us, but at the same time, they're like, listen, he's he's a brilliant player. He's a quality centre-half. Sometimes they're a bit blinker than they go. He's not as good as Suter, so... No, that see that, I, I've seen a lot of that today on Twitter. It's just people saying most overrated player in Scotland. He'll never be a regular for Scotland. And that you're like, you're 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 blinkered about it because the player I'm seeing is a guy that will a hundred percent be playing for Scotland because he, he just looks class. Yeah, brilliant. No, he will. He will moving forward. 
So I suppose that takes us nicely on to Boxing Day. Yes. Away to Tanadice. Unfortunately, yeah. we will not be going away to Tanadice. I know. Shame. Uh, new restrictions put in place that only 500 could be at outdoor stadiums for uh, light, light outdoor, like sporting, sporting or events, whatever outdoors. I don't think there's any point in getting into the that decision itself because nah. we could be here all night and yeah, I think that's going to be done about three fat gadgets sitting on a Zoom call. Aye. You know what I mean? So I should, listen, I mean, should listen to us though. I think the majority of the people listening will probably be in agreement with us when we say it's a shambles their decision. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we were fine to be at Easter Road last night. We were fine to be at Hander on Sunday. Yeah, you know, it just this, seems a bit silly. This whole taking it, you know, as an arbitrary number right across the board, whether it's 60,000 at Parkhead or 1,000 at Dumbarton, you know, capacity is just beyond the realms for me. But, Ridiculous, really. But hey-ho, we go up to Tanadice. We've already been up to Tanadice this season. A 3-1 victory, obviously, in the League Cup. And I believe Liam has been looking into our opponent's recent yeah. form. Um, so, obviously, United... The last three games, uh, uh, a very much depleted United side went to Ibrox and, and got beat 1-0 by a, a Tavernier penalty. I'm not too sure how many of their first-team regulars played in that game and if they're still out. I think I read today that they're still kind of hit by COVID. So I think they've had a fresh, like a fresh bout today, yeah. 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 I mean... You, Chances are the game might even get called off. That's Green what I can specs, see. Green tinted specs off. You've got to feel. You've got to feel sorry for them, really, don't you? Uh, that's what is that their third now wave of COVID? I'm sure they had so. one earlier in the season as well. So, not great. Uh, before well, that, they have to have ten academy kids, and for that, the the, the Rangers game. So yeah, there was, I think idea. there was at least five or six that started looking at yeah. their. Because I remember putting their team in our chat and being like. I don't recognise. It was the, it was the bookies' odds. The bookies' odds. I've never seen anything like that in my yeah, life. Before. Forty, they were sixty-six to one. And yeah. to be fair, they, and they nearly came away with a point, and it was probably a really gallant effort, uh, much similar to St. Mirren's last night against Celtic. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about anything like that. Uh, <laughs> their game before they played uh, Rangers at Ibrox, they were at home at Livingston, lost again one 0 and previously to that, they were at Tannadice, played Celtic, and lost three 0 They've not scored in four and they've only got five goals in their last nine. So uh, we're coming up against a side that's not really uh, firing on all cylinders attacking-wise compared to when we played them at Easter Road and they, they spanked us three and out. So to say that another one of them is on the cards is probably unlikely, but, you know, Although, they can turn around <laughs> at any given moment. <laughs> Who does a team want to play when they're on a bad run of form, though? <laughs> uh, well, it looks like we're picking up, though. We're picking up. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, that's you look at the decision to get rid of Ross, and we were all raging. Well, not raging about it, but we were kind of like, oh, bad move, bad move. We've taken seven points out of a yeah. possible 12. You know, we're, we're unbeaten in is it unbeaten yeah. three now. Two clean sheets in a row, two yeah. league victories in a row. Seven points so, out of nine, is it not? I can't remember. Did we not? Lost? Well, we we got a draw. Did we not lose? Draw win win. Have we not now? Draw win win. Aye. Yeah. Who was the draw Ross game? Ross County. Ross County uh, was when Ross oh, was St. Mirren, uh, No, uh, oh, St. Mirren, Dundee, and ah, you're right, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. So I uh, unbeaten in three in the league, seven out of nine. We have we have turned a corner, you know, as as much as we couldn't get. I think you can be nothing but confident going into this yeah. game, really. Your, your only worry at the minute is, in those three games, um, we've scored three goals. Is that right? Two of them have been defenders and one was an own goal. And the other so, the two were set pieces as well. Yeah. But, uh, there does, uh, in no, the last three games, but not in the last three league games. Because Josh uh, Gamble scored against St. Mirren. St. Mirren, yeah. But even, we're still, I think the attacking play will come. Under Maloney, I yeah. think he, I think he's done the right thing by trying to sort out. It seems that you know there was more of an emphasis defensively than offensively, and yeah. so, you know as as we've selfishly you know selfishly said, bringing the winter break forward's probably been a blessing because it gives Maloney a, a good solid time to work, not only with the players that are in, already in the building, but players like Chris Muller, Dylan Tate, who'll be coming in yeah. in January as well. It gives them almost a month to 
to really look at the squad and yeah. you know that run of fixtures Aberdeen Dundee United away Celtic away Hearts at home that was tough tough, tough games yeah. whether it was Jack Ross David Gray or Sean Maloney in charge that's probably as, as at the moment as tough a run of fixtures out with playing Rangers and amongst yeah. that group as well that you probably could have had yeah and you know the the fact that the the, the games have been pushed back is a good Scoops thing. Us, gives, really, doesn't it? Yeah, like I said, it gives and it also gives us time to get players like Mackey, Halberg. Um, yeah, Halberg's he, back in training. Well, they're both back in training now as well, aren't they? So, so yeah, because something like Halberg could be a big beneficiary of the way that Maloney yeah. wants to play. I thought yeah. Halberg last season when called upon did all right. You know, in the latter stages of the season. Uh, the game that jumps out to me is the quarter final against Motherwell. I thought he was okay. So I mean, did they not play the I'd, semi against Dundee United? I thought it was was it not the semi? He played I, I the think semi. He, I think he played United in both games. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's right. Brilliant. He had a really good game in that game. Yeah. I think in the it's final. I think uh, I'm not too sure where his future lies. I think it's probably down to him if he wants to be, you know, if if he's happy being a, a well, bit part player. I think, I think if he hadn't got injured, I think if it hadn't been injured, he'd be away by now. Yeah. Yeah, I think he. I think he's out of contract at the end of this season as well. A decent yeah. young player, though. Decent so it'll be player. it'll be interesting. I mean, I don't see too many changes personnel wise. Not for us, unless for unless the worst Sunday. happens. And we get. Our... Yeah, I can't. I can't see it. I can't see an awful lot changing. I don't. I, I don't see why he would want to change it. Just depend on. Hopefully, Newell. If if Doyle Hayes is out, for example, hopefully Newell's back. Just being a dead leg. Yeah, I think Campbell's I probably will be out. For the way that Maloney wants to play, I think it's important that we keep Campbell in there. I don't think we can play this sort of high pressing midfield play with uh, Doyle Hayes and with Newell. It's going to have to be <laughs> one or the other. Um, but anyway, yeah. predictions. What are, what are we going for, Callum? What's your what's your prediction? Well, I'll stay nice and positive and go two nil Hibs. Liam. Um, I can't see us keeping a clean sheet three games in a row, but the defending last night did uh, encourage me, and I think uh, Sean Maloney will give us a late Christmas present and we'll get three goals, 3 now. So you don't think we'll keep a clean sheet, <laughs> but we'll win 3 now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of insight that you get on this, this programme. <laughs> I haven't even had a drink tonight either. I, know. <laughs> I think uh, I'll I'll go and, I'll go with you, Cal. Two 0 I can see. I don't see Dundee United troubling us. They're, I know they put three past us at Easter Road, but we were absolutely honking that day. And if they're struggling, and, uh, we, we if they're, were, if they're we really bad. struggling with with COVID and stuff, you can maybe see them doing something like what Samirin done last night. They're not going to come out back to the wall. wall. It's going to be more backs to the wall than anything else you'd thought battling. So then we might get a really tough game from that point of view, but they probably shouldn't trouble us too much. Famous last words, eh? But yeah. <laughs> I, I, t- I mean, I'm confident going into it after seeing us play last night and then Sean Mooney will then have another two, two sessions with the players. Uh, and if that's what they can do last night in two sessions, then double that for <laughs> build, build for, for Boxing Day. So I think he's got, definitely has got a lot um, there to be happy with, some stuff to build on. And, you know, I think we'll see another win again on Saturday. Yeah, just a shame there's no fans there for it, but yeah. It is a shame, yeah. But I mean, the, this it is what it is. And fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything crossed that we're back in for um, Celtic. Yeah, selfishly, I'm kind of at least I'm, I'm kind of glad at least there's a game to watch on on Sunday rather than rather than nothing at all. What? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that that rounds us up nicely, lads. Um, it does. Myself and Liam would have been back with extra time next Thursday to look over the Celtic game and preview the Hearts game. However, oh, we've nothing to talk about. We've nothing to talk about, so we are not sure if we'll come back before the end of the year. Um, we might look to do something like a yearly review, but to be honest, I didn't really want to depress myself. But if you are if you are good boys and girls, I'm not, not, no, I'm not doing a year review and a, year a yearly review. review so that's the two St Johnston games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, right, so I think know. I think myself and Liam um, 
will just we'll we'll take a well a well deserved break going into <laughs> the new four year. Grueling episodes after <laughs> four four grueling episodes. But no, we've I've certainly enjoyed doing this. Um, Definitely, you know we've we've had a look at the sort of stats as well, and you know the the numbers are sort of there and thereabouts with with the main Monday show that Gav Gav and the boys do. So. Maybe you know, just a little bit more, eh? For us. You know, we're me and me and Liam are really pleased that you know you guys are taking the time to listen to us. You know, whether that be through Spotify, YouTube, Apple, whatever. You know, it's it is it is pleasing for us to know that there is a fair number of people out there who like to listen to shite opinions like ours. <laughs> so exactly. I guess for for myself, Gav, Gav and the boys will be back on Monday to to go over the Dundee United game. So if we don't speak to you before, well, we won't speak to you before, so I hope everybody has a, a great Christmas. And if we don't speak to you before the following week, have a very, very happy new year. Yeah, definitely. And uh, all joking aside, we really appreciate everyone who listens to the podcast. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll only have more content to come for you um, for the rest of the season. And if Gav renews our contract um, for next season as well. So Again, like Craig, have a have a great Christmas, folks, and a happy new year if we don't talk to you. And, and also, Callum, uh, thanks for coming on, Callum. Our, our, coming Zoom, on our Zoom man, he's there. Yeah, been a pleasure, yeah. gents. And uh, yeah. just touching on what you say, happy Merry Christmas to both of you guys. Oh, thanks, Merry mate. Christmas to you, Callum. And I hope you don't have any more stressful shopping trips the as does like you did today. And no, me. hopefully not. It's not sounds like Craig's was the worst. It's going to be nowhere near <laughs> as bad as our trip to JD Sports in St. James's. 300 Jesus. quid on two items. What a travesty. They aren't, we'll they aren't we'll even for you, eh? They aren't even for you. <laughs> exactly. Right, we'll end it there, lads. Thanks very much for coming on, and we'll see you again soon. Well, the best. One. Cheers, folks.